This video will give you an overview of the configuration steps uh, required for integrating HANA database with GSC-12 for uh, user provisioning and risk analysis purposes. So we are going to cover summary of the steps required to install and implement the HANA plugin for GRC-12 integration. And we'll also go through the steps uh, in GRC, uh, the configuration steps in GRC to require for user provisioning, okay? Yeah. On in HANA database through GRC. So we are going to divide this uh, video into two parts mainly. One is the basis related steps. The second is the GRC related steps. And additionally, we will also see a couple of uh, uh, configuration steps required for uh, with a couple of examples. Okay, so one of them is, let's say, this, how do we configure HANA database uh, GRC for SAML authentic authentication? Another requirement we, we could say is uh, what, how, what, how do we disable the password? Okay, on in HANA database, right? If you are using single sign-on, what do you do to disable the password for the users? Okay, and there's another requirement that we could see is how do you populate that client number in the client session field uh, of a user ID in HANA database? So we'll see some of you know uh, these three as an ex as an additional configuration steps as an example. Okay, so first up, what we have is the basis steps, the basis tasks. What does the basis uh, administrator do uh, for us uh, to integrate the HANA database with GRC? So what do we, what do you need to do for that? Now, in most places, you know, these are the steps that basis administrators would do. As you can see, there is a step that requires you to download the plugin. Then there is a step that requires you to deploy that plugin, okay, and then execute some and there are some SQL scripts, and also creating a database user, a connection user, uh, an RFC logical connection, right, and then configuring DBCO. So these are some of the steps that you know the, normally a basis person would do. Uh, but if there is an occasion where you know an opportunity where as a GRC security person you get to do do these, uh, you are asked to you know uh, do these these activities. So this idea that this video should give you an overview and idea on, on how to do that. What needs to be done? Okay. So we will go through the steps in the next slides. And after we are done with this, we'll also we'll go through the GRC related steps. So the first thing the basis administrator would do is to go and download the HANA database related plugin. Okay. So and to do that, you know, either you or whoever does this activity uh, will need a S user ID. Okay of the support uh, portal. Okay, now it's not that easy uh, to find this plugin, you know, uh, when I was checking for it, I, I've, I struggled to find it, kind of. So it, to make it easy for you, you in the search section, right, when you try to search for this plugin, you search with the word at COGRCPI, in the download section, okay, to make it easy. So I basically tried searching with HCU underscore GRCPI and it never showed up. And I also went to this path in the guide, uh, I, I didn't get it. So finally, somehow I figured this and tried with this and uh, I was able to get that list of plugins. So you download uh, the basis administrator or you or whoever it is will have to download this plugin, okay, like this. So search for its COGRCPI to download it, okay. So when you download that, you know, there is a delivery unit, okay, that is going to be uh, given to you. You know, that delivery unit will contain the, uh, the SQL scripts that needs to be executed to activate the 
GRC plugin. So you, the person doing this, would you know import the delivery unit into your HANA database environment system in HANA Studio. Okay, so this second screenshot you see here is basically uh, the list of uh, SQL scripts that this delivery unit would bring in, bring in. Okay, and when it's uploaded, you'll find uh, these folder packages like under SAP, GRC, PI, you'll find these packages uh, which will contain the these SQL scripts. And to do, and uh, also as the user that will execute the scripts and all, they will need to have these roles uh, in HANA database. Now, how do you import this delivery unit? So you need to be in, uh, after importing uh, the delivery unit through the modular perspective, each person who is going to the basis administrator or the person responsible for uh, installing and uh, deploying this delivery unit will go to the development, SAP HANA development perspective and then you know create a repository, right? And then they will you will find these uh, SQL scripts here. Okay, so there are about sixteen SQL scripts under ARA folder, ARA package. Okay, and there are eleven scripts under ARQ uh, package. Okay, so th this you will see after that. Uh, delivery unit is imported into HANA Studio. And after that is done, uh, before you execute all the scripts, so one first thing that you need to do is to delete this SAP GRC schema, okay, and recreate it. This has something to do, you know, this has something to do with the ownership of this object, the schema object. So you can do that, okay. so. You meaning some the person who is going to install and deploy this pl plugin, okay. Now, like I said, you know, to person doing this deployment will need this these roles um, shown in the screenshot. To execute the script, right? So you double click, and basically, you know, you go to the repositories tab, uh, drill down to the package, uh, the SAP, GRC, PI, ARA, and you'll see the list of SQL scripts. So you double click on the package, it opens up the SQL console. And uh, before you execute, you can now hit this green icon here. Okay, you need to associate uh, the script execution, execution with the database. Okay, in database in, in which you're going to install this plugin, the GRC plugin. So you need to select the system in which you want to install this plugin. So to, in order to do that, there is a uh, icon here uh, that you need to select, which will bring up this box. Okay, and uh, you select the systems. If you have multiple uh, HANA database systems, you know, added to your HANA, in HANA, your HANA Studio, all those systems will be listed here. So you need to select the right system in which, uh, the system in which you want to install this plugin. Okay, so select that, and then you'll see the system name here, which was selected, and after which you can go and click on this green icon, or the arrow mark to execute the script. Now, to refer, uh, you know, to, you can refer to this OSS note 186 uh, 99112 for this SQL scripts list, okay? And uh, that are required to be activated. So this note will give you the uh, list of scripts that need to be activated, okay? So the point here is you need to first select, okay? the system in which you need to, you want to activate the plugin. Okay, that's a mandatory thing. 
And if you go through this OSS note, okay, 2589878, okay, in this SAP note, it will give you the list of uh, scripts that in the sequence of which, uh, in which you need to execute the scripts. So after you execute all the scripts, uh, you know, this is how in the procedures of folder, right, you know, under catalog, or under procedures, you will see the scripts, okay, that have been activated, that were executed. Now, when you execute the scripts, right, uh, there may be some errors, okay, so you, you need to fix those errors, okay, so many times it's so possible that, you know, uh, if you look here, it's, you know, there is for this create type, JCP, GRC, action, name, where car, you know, there's a number of uh, the length of that uh, field, okay. Uh, so many times it's possible that, you know, you will get an error saying, you know, it is not enough, you know, it's not right. The length of this field variable is not correct. So you might, you know, look at the logs um, and, you know, see the messages in the error log and manually edit uh, this uh, field length and then execute it and it might work. Okay. Now, in, for some scripts, you know, there, there is uh, SAP would give you additional uh, SAP notes uh, with the scripts in it, updated scripts in it. So you will have to look for those notes and uh, upload them and use those uh, SQL, you know, statements with from those scripts uh, in order to successfully execute uh, some of these scripts. Okay, SQL scripts. So it's not going to be straightforward sometimes, you know, you'll have some errors, so, but uh, looking at the error logs, you'll have to uh, fix those errors. And uh, like I said, look, go and look at this SAP node 2589878, and that will give you uh, the list of scripts, or the, the sequence of uh, in which the scripts have to be executed. Okay. Now, after the scripts are executed and, you know, you see all the procedures activated, okay, the basis administrator would have to go, or you, if you are doing it, you'd have to go and create a, a connection user in HANA database, okay, in HANA Studio. Now, you can name that any, you know, give it any name you want for that user ID, um, but the thing is, that user ID would need to be assigned this role. Okay, SAP GRC PIC roles, SAP GRC PI admin role. So the connection user would need to be assigned SAP GRC PI admin role. After which you know, the basis administrator can go and uh, will go and create a logical RFC connection. Now this logical RFC connection is nothing in it, it's just logical, okay? So connection type is going to be a uh, Okay, now you're going to use the connection user ID and the logical RFC connection or, you know, in configuring the DBCO. So the, the transaction DBCO has to be configured. Okay, so the DB uh, connection field will be your, uh, the logical RFC connection name that you gave. The D username here is the DBC, you know, DB connection that you, user ID that you created um, in HANA database. So you use those two in the pieces of information in these two previous steps, the connection user ID and the logical RFC connection name in, in creating, uh, configuring the DBCO, okay? Like this, and the database uh, field that you have here, in that you have to select HDB, okay, and the connection info will also have the port number. So, so these are some of the reasons why you know the basis administrators would have these pieces of information. So, uh, they they end up doing this uh, installation of uh, the HANA database plugin and activating and running those scripts. Okay, after that, you know, we, they, you can you can test this. Uh, basis administrator can test this to see if the connection is working, uh, DBCO connection is working fine or not. So the transaction for uh, the program to do that is ADBC underscore test underscore connection to test your DBCO connection. Okay. Now, optionally, uh, if you want to 
maintain your user IDs, right? HANA database user IDs in using SU01, uh, you can make an entry of your database connection in this table, user usr underscore dbms dbms underscore system okay so you make that entry and you give the specify the client right so with this what happens is uh, in su01 dbms tab is going to be uh, added okay your dbms tab will show up in su01 but to manage the user ids in su01 uh, the HANA database users in using SU01, uh, you'll have to, in the DBMS tab, at the minimum, you have to uh, maintain the user ID in the DBMS user field. Okay, once you do that, what you see here is the roles that are existing in the HANA database side. Okay, so then you can create the user IDs in SU01 and assign the roles like this. From here, you can also just, you know, use the password, assign the passwords, also specify what the authentication, me authentication uh, uh, mechanism is, and you have the validity period and dates here. Okay, so the main thing is the user ID here to indicate that this particular user is also a HANA database user, which you will have to maintain the user ID in this field also in the DBMS tab. And if you want to do a mass uh, updates uh, for users, there is a program called rsusr underscore dbms underscore users for mass maintenance of HANA database users. Okay, now, when you, another thing is that when you maintain this thing, what happens and you do this, uh, maintain the user IDs through SU01, in SU0, in HANA database, There is a session client field. When you open and look at the user ID, you'll find the HANA session client field here. So when you update this, you know, when you configure this, right, in this table, uh, usr underscore dbms underscore system, you have a client number field here. And when you maintain the user IDs through SU01, that session client field will be populated with this client number. Okay, so that's another thing you need to, you, you can note here. Okay, now with this, the GRC, uh, I mean, uh, the basis administration activities will complete. And uh, and like I said, okay, this is an optional thing. Okay, the this maintenance of this table is an optional thing. It's not mandatory to for GRC integration on a database integration purposes. Okay. After that, you know, after the basis team is basically done with this, uh, this step you can also perform. Once they tell you that the system is ready for GRC configuration, you can also come and test this program. Okay. Now, this system, you know, the GRC plugin is installed, the, uh, the basis team hands over the system to you. And now you have to go through the GRC Pro configuration steps. Okay. So as a GRC consultant, you know, you, you would be familiar with all these steps. Uh, so you need to maintain the connectors and the connection types. So maintain the connection settings, configuration settings, right? Uh, connector settings like, and mapping, you know, mapping map for action. Then there is a BC set for Tana database related uh, rule sets, you know, for, you can activate, you know, activate those. And uh, if you are going to maintain roles or uh, through BRM, you know, you need to also optionally, you know, maintain labels uh, for roles, okay? So these are, there's a bunch of uh, GRC related configuration steps that you'll have to go through. So let's uh, take a look uh, at them now, one by one. First up, you need to maintain the connectors and the connection type. So for the connection type, you'll be using HANA database, HDB, okay?
and uh, for the integration scenario next uh, you use the auth and spmg uh, integration scenarios for user provisioning and uh, risk analysis okay a role mg SPMG, there is some additional step that you need to uh, go through because SPMG for EM is not directly supported in HANA database. So you'll have to go through an additional step to do configure or integrate to use the SPMG integration scenario. Okay. Now here, you know, in the connector group, yeah, I would use uh, the default ones. I always use the default ones. I don't create uh, and uh, separate, you know, custom one. So that's one thing. After that, you maintain the configuration setting. Okay. Uh, for you maintain the parameter uh, 1022 and 1046. Okay. For risk analysis purposes, where you specify the HANA database uh, connector. And uh, here, the connector that you would use, right, so for defined connectors and all, you'll use the uh, logical RFC connection name that was created, okay? Whatever you connect, you know, create here in this step, right? That is the connector you would be using uh, as part of the uh, definition, this connector configuration. Okay. Okay, so like I said, you know, you also need to maintain this configuration parameters 1022 and 1046 and uh, specify your uh, HANA connector name here. And if you are using EAM, you know, if you want to look for, you know, for firefighting or in, uh, let's say, uh, in my case, you know, I use this attributes for SAML authentication purposes. So if there are any special requirements like that, you know, you can design the attributes here. Okay. Now, one of the requirements for EAM is that, you know, you, you need to mandatorily have an audit policy uh, defined, okay, created. So that's part of the EAM configuration. So you have some attributes listed, you know, you know for, uh, default, uh, you know, SAP provided uh, attributes here, uh, which are some of them are HANA related. So audit policy is required from an uh, EAM standpoint. Okay. And uh, if you see here, ext HANA external identity name, HANA disabled password for SAML. Okay. These are all SAML related uh, uh, attributes, whichever you see this at here. Okay. External a user ID, you know, as user ID and external user ID so case and all of these. Okay, now HANA Web ID URL is also another mandatory attribute if you're, you know, using uh, Web ID. Okay, so here you know, one thing I would like to men men mention is even though, you know, it says HANA external identity name here, right? Uh, and then external user ID, uh, you know, as user ID, and uh, HANA external user ID case. When I tried to use it, it didn't, they didn't work. Okay, so we had to use this particular an external underscore identity underscore name. So the point to note here is, I would like to mention is, when, I, when we looked at the code, of uh, this when you when you know the, I took an abapper's help uh, to look at the code of this particular step uh, for this purpose and in the code HANA external ID external identity name for example was specified with an OR statement with this one also okay so you, it meant that you can either use this or this so because it, this one didn't work for us uh, for, you know, I used, uh, we used this to specify the attribute in the attributes uh, here and as an attribute name. Okay, then it worked. Okay, so that's why I mentioned this one here, even though 
you don't directly see this here. Okay, so this external identity name and external user ID as user ID, these are we used from from an SAML authentication purposes. Okay, so we'll talk it, uh, talk about this briefly uh, towards the end. Okay, so yeah, so after maintaining your uh, you know the parameters, the configuration settings for risk analysis, the parameters. Uh, 1022 and 1046, you also, if you are going to use EAM, uh, okay, or, uh, you know, SAML authentication type of mechanism, then you also have to specify the attributes here, okay, attributes for the connector. Now, after that, you may go and maintain the mapping for action and connector groups, okay for all the four uh, actions. And by default, when you install, the, when you activate the BC set, uh, you will also get uh, the, as a connector group, HANA underscore LG. So I basically use the default ones. After that, you know, you can go and uh, activate the HANA BC set. Um, for you know risk analysis purposes, right? So you need to get your HANA related function IDs and risk IDs into the GRC, you know, access control, right? So the HANA related GRC uh, BC set is uh, GRAC underscore RA underscore who set underscore SAP underscore HANA. But along with this, you'll also re need to reactivate this common one. Okay, otherwise, uh, the function IDs and risk IDs don't show up in access control. So you need to act reactivate uh, the common rule set also. Okay. And you activate this on export mode. After that, these are a couple of, you know, next two steps are optional. You know, you can maintain uh, the role and the label uh, for the role for HANA database uh, when you import uh, the roles, HANA database roles. So you can maintain the uh, role, role labels for the role types, okay? And you can also specify the maximum length for the HANA database roles. So this is basically for HAP is actually for HANA analytic privileges. So if you're going to use analytic privileges, you need to, you can utilize this um, role type and specify the length for that role type. After which, you know, you need to go and, uh, you know, for risk analysis purposes uh, and, uh, you know, provisioning purposes, you also have to specify the access control owners. If you have somebody existing, that's fine. You know, you can, um, if it's already configured, that's okay. Uh, but if it is not, this is also one of the steps that you would do, you would need to do. Okay, specify the access control owners for, uh, you know, as a risk owner or a role owner. And uh, then, you know, the risk uh, IDs that show up, you know, because of that BC set activation, if you need to assign a risk owner for uh, the risk, HANA risks, for example, in this case, HANA001 is a risk ID, you need to assign owners, risk owners for the HANA risk. So you'd have to do that. And then, you know, to you go through uh, the role import uh, for bringing in the roles created in HANA database into GRC. Okay, you go through those steps uh, in access management under role, role mass maintenance, role import. You go through the steps to import the HANA database roles into GRC. Okay, and you can check the table GRC RLCon, for example, to see if the import was successful or not. Okay, to just for validating. When you import, you'll get the success message here but to validate whether it is really done or not, you can also check this table, GRAC RLCon, for example, okay?
after all that you also have to synchronize you can have to run the synchronization jobs uh, pfcg grsa pfcg authorization sync and grsa repository object sync okay and then you can also again see uh, the results in uh, rlcon okay now with pfcg authorization sync right that job uh, there is a chance that it might fail okay error out it will give an above dump okay so that is basically uh, a memory problem and this note 2509294 gives you some information on that or you can go and tell your basis administrator to look into it and they will know what to do okay so this is something you need to keep in mind that when the authorization sync job is run you might get into and you might get an above dump when you run that okay after that uh, you need to generate the rule sets okay uh, you can select you can do it in the access control itself uh, or you can come you know from spro uh, you can generate the sod rule set and you don't need to generate every rule risk id you just just pick the ones for hana okay hana risk ids uh, start with the chain mainly okay uh, in the next couple of slides you will see that okay so you need generation of rule set is also needed now let's go through some of the steps or you know tasks that we would do as security administrators or grs administrators after all these configuration steps are done okay so let's go and take a look at function ids so when you install i know activate those two uh, bc sets right the hana uh, bc set and the common bc set you will see hana related function ids okay they are hana related function ids will be uh, they begin with hn okay and hn01 hn then you have some num you know there is a number numerical sequence there okay and then under which you will have uh, under actions you will have privileges system privileges listed okay for example this hn01 uh, contains the privilege user administration user admin which is required for user administration purposes in hana database as a action here okay uh, this will not have permissions okay this are all this will only have uh, actions which are system privileges okay so for example hn02 is for maintaining catalog rules so it will have the role admin privilege okay so the function ids for hana they begin with hn and if you look at the risk ids for hana they begin with hana okay there are two types of uh, risk ids naming conventions that you will see one is for uh, you know sod purposes has sod related uh, which will be the, which will begin with hana and uh, the ones with critical actions will begin with um, hana cr 1234 cra 1234 like that okay so uh, there are two naming conventions here one is for sod uh, hana sod and the other one is hana critical actions okay so for, for example hn hana 001 risk id uh, if you see it, it is a conflict hn between hn01 and hn02 which are basically user maintaining users and maintaining catalog rules so that's a, a predefined uh, conflict okay so as a security administrator you will definitely need these two uh, access so when you run the risk analysis uh, so you will always get this uh, as a risk okay so running executing the risk analysis report is the same uh, like we normally do uh, but in this case we uh, just because there are no permissions in hana uh, for hana you just select the action level and run this report okay so you will get the list list of uh, depending on what hana or hana database roles are assigned to you in hana db you will get the risk analysis uh, 
Now this guy is here. Okay. And the row level is the same. Okay. So now let us see what we have to do, uh, what is required for HANA, sorry, uh, SAML authentication, right? If you want to enable SAML authentication for user provisioning purposes, uh, you can refer to this uh, SAP node 3033090. Okay. And like I was mentioning earlier, you instead of using the SAP, you know, from the, from the attributes from the drop down, you could specify uh, these attributes right external underscore identity name uh, this is a siml idp okay so there's an idp uh, that the basis team would need to provide to you okay so this is a siml path configuration thing uh, so basis you this piece of information you need to get it from your basis administrator okay the second one is external user id as user id you can specify the user id name there and whether the external user case whether user id has to be in uppercase either you know or lowercase you can specify that and if you want to disable the password then for simon authentication you have to say yes specify yes here okay so when the user id is provisioned this is how it's going to look with all these parameters you will have the simon authentication checkbox uh, checked by default and when you click on this configure button, okay, you will find this IDP, whatever IDP you specify here in the attributes, identity, the external identity name, you will find that, that IDP URL here, okay? And the external ID is going to be the user ID, okay? So for, uh, So for uh, configuring SAML authentic authentication, uh, these attributes needs to be set, okay, in SPRO, in the connectors, so in the connector settings, right? Um, yeah, like I said, you know, this one is something you need from, from the basis team. Another point I said, I uh, mentioned was the SAP default the drop down what the attributes that you get get in the default in the drop down those did not work for me so i used these for for a saml authentication okay and this is part of the code the, the abap code okay so this is perfectly fine it perfectly works So disable the password, right? So one thing what we did to disable the password here is that, you know, we actually modified uh, the script, the create dot underscore users to SQL script. That was part of this uh, package, you know, the HANA plugin deployment, right? Remember we, there were some SQL scripts that need to, we need to execute to deploy the plugin, install the plugin. So in that, you'll have this create underscore user script. So what we did was we removed in from that script, we removed this password, okay, uh, parameter, okay. So if you see here, this we deactivated, we commented out the original one, okay, and then from the copied that line and removed the parameter password from there. Okay. And uh, this is there in five spots. Okay. When you look at the script, it will be there in five places, the same thing. So we had to repeat this thing five times. So after that, uh, this thing was disabled. Okay. You can also refer to this SAP node 2554370. So this is something that we did. Um, another thing, this client session one, right? So 
In our case, we could not use that table entry that we were talking about, the DBCO table entry. Uh, so there is an OSS node, 27. So if you want to populate uh, the session, you know, the client number of your backend system into HANA database in the session client field, there is an OSS node, uh, 27. I keep repeating OSS, no, SAP node 271188. Okay, so there is a body that you can use to do the auto uh, population of that field. Okay, so we use that body as per this note, uh, 271188, and we wrote a two-line code there. Okay. And uh, after that, we could we were able to uh, populate the client number. So this would be your typical uh, scenario if you want to do this. You would probably need to implement this body too, if that is one of your requirements to populate the session client num you know the client number in the session client field. Okay. Now earlier when we spoke about the table entry, right? Uh, I think We'll go back to that briefly. This one, right? This one will only work if, you know, the, in the DBMS tab, the user ID is maintained, okay? But let's say if you're not using DBMS tab, right? You're not making this entry at all because I said this is an optional thing. And that's what would, would, would be uh, probably for you also. So you may not be using this configuration. So this, this mechanism, right, for managing the user IDs. So in that case, you would, and if you still, the requirement for you is to maintain uh, that session client field in HANA, on the HANA database side, then you would have to use this body. Okay, so you take a look at this particular SAP node, 277-1188. It will give you the instructions for as to what needs to be done, and you can take an ABAP developer's help to do this code. Okay, all right. Now, you can go through some of this, I have listed some of the SAP nodes here uh, that are related to this HANA DB GRC plugin integration. Uh, I would advise you to go through these OSS nodes also. Okay, now some of these things are, in here if you see these are uh, SAML related. So if it is, SAML authentication is not something that you're going to implement, then you don't need to go through these nodes. Uh, uh, but if you are implementing SAML authentication, then you know, I would say you should go through this SAP nodes, okay? And this one, for example, I said, uh, it will definitely, you know, if authentication, authorization sync job fails, this is something you'll have to refer to, okay, this SAP node. And these are some of the blogs or link. Uh, many of you may have seen this. Uh, you might want to, so for risk analysis, for user provisioning, for EM, you can, you know, there are some blogs some people have written. Uh, so you might check those out too. So this is how, you know, you, um, you know, you, the steps that you have to go through uh, to integrate HANA uh, database with GRC. So there are some activities that the base system will do, right? So like downloading the plugin, plugin the HANA database plugin, then deploying it, executing the required SQL scripts, creating the logical RFC connection, which is also your uh, uh, connector, a GRC connector, then configuring the DBCO, and then you do your GRC uh, configurations pro steps, right? Uh, maintaining the connectors and the connection types, configuration settings, connector settings, 
and all of this and running the sync jobs, generating the rule set. So these are some of the activities that you will have to uh, perform uh, as a GRC administrator. Okay.